We can't tell you how frustrating it was for us to upload our podcast when we first got started. The websites were clunky, we had data limits, and it was all so confusing. That is until we found Zencast. Zencast is an online platform built for podcasters to not only upload their podcasts, track their listeners, connect their audience, and so much more. Zencast plans have no upload or download limits, so your cost won't grow as you do. Embed their player that automatically updates to show the latest episode of your show. Zencast lets you see your podcast downloads along with your traffic website in Google Analytics. Zencast also supports multiple podcasts under one account. The best part is, if you already have a podcast on another platform, you can switch to Zencast with a one-click importer, all free of charge. So what are you waiting for? Head over to howtomakeapodcast.co slash Zencast to start saving time and money with your podcast today. How to make a podcast. John Bunn here, joined as always with Nick Miller. Nick Miller, how are you, Nick Miller? Nick Miller, what's good? Nick Miller. So, Nick Miller. As you know, my name is Nick Miller. There is, is, there is a TV show, New Girl, and you know that there is a character named Nick Miller. So, whenever I am on Facebook and anyone shares anything from new girl if it's any of my friends i always comment something like i am or wave or you know kind of the emoji where the guy's doing this like um one time i took a how nick miller test are you and i only got a 60 percent I, I don't know i don't i find that incredibly accurate <laughs> <laughs> for whatever that means but nick Ooh. miller we've said that a lot of times what is good in your world Dude, tell me all um, about it, t- dude. I'm I'm so so well. So I a couple months ago I started on a fitness journey. You know, yeah, you did. best shape of my life by forty. I still have like thirteen months or so to do that. So I'm feeling really good. My trainer is very happy with my progress. Not only is my weight dropping, but my waist is smaller, which means I'm building muscle with yeah, the amount of and anyway. It's all good. Sex appeal is crazy through my screen. I can't even focus. I'm oozing. I'm oozing sex appeal. Yeah. That sounds disgusting. That that sounded really gross. It did. I'm sorry. It felt uncomfortable. I'm sorry if you're listening to us talk and ramble. But Nick, we're going to do some stuff today about podcasting. That's what we do around here at How to Make a Podcast. We do. We talk about podcasting on the How to Make a Podcast podcast. We are repeating ourselves a lot, Nick Miller, about the podcast podcast. Now let's get to the podcast about podcasting Nick Miller. (laughs) <laughs> Uncle Tabby. That is fun to say. So last week we talked all about sponsors and getting them and selling them and contracts and who to be looking for for sponsors. A lot of you all really resonated with that. So we wanted to continue that conversation mm-hmm. and really just kind of go a little further when it comes to our contracts with our sponsors, what we do once they're booked, how we keep them happy how we renew the contracts, all that kind of good stuff. But first, I think it would probably be best to just like quickly recap last week. We went over what to look for in a sponsor. That's going to be a company that's like-minded, that needs you, that can afford you. And it's something that you love to use, a product or service that you love to use. Those are the main four things we're looking for with our, our sponsors. We talked about when you should try to get your sponsors, and that is when you have listeners and whenever people actually care what you have to say. We broke down how to charge for sponsors, and we really just went through that with our our press kit and then selling them and getting contracts. So if you haven't listened to last week, be sure to check it out. But this week, Nick, Nick, I want to pretend that we have a contract in hand from a sponsor. We do. move forward from there. We do have a lot of those. So when we signed up our first sponsor, why don't you talk, Nick, about how we went the extra mile for our first sponsor? Because they got more than they bargained for. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So I think our what our contract stated is that they would get um, four, let's say four episodes a month or we put it, you know, whatever our main podcast day was, which was Mondays. We put, you know, um, every Monday of the month or something like that. Um, in any given quarter, you're going to have 13 
dates. Isn't that, isn't that correct? Usually, you know, you're Mm -hmm. going to have 13, but we put it as kind of like, okay, you get, you know, three months at four Mondays. So that's 12, but Hey, we're actually going to just throw you in this bonus one at 13 for no extra charge, you know? So that's a good way to go an extra mile. Um, say, okay, you get a 30 second ad, but then whenever we filmed it, it ended up being like a minute 15. So it just ended up being a little, Hey, you get this, this little extra in there. And then anytime we would do a bonus episode, which for how to make a, a podcast, we haven't done one of those, but for how to film weddings, we would do um, maybe once a month or sometimes twice a month, we would have a Thursday episode, which we just considered a bonus episode. Contractually, we were not obligated to put a, a sponsorship in, to put an ad in, but we decided, you know what? We're just going to do that. And we made sure to tell the sponsors that we did it. Let them know that we were giving them value, that we were going the extra mile saying, hey, I know contractually we only had to do 13 uh, Monday episodes, but we had four Thursday episodes. So you actually paid for 12 and you ended up getting 17 episodes, you know, stuff like that. Then on top of that, um, putting stuff out there in our Facebook groups and saying, Hey, uh, music's bed, our, our sponsor, we love their, their music service. You know, here's a song that I found, you know, what are some of your favorites on music bed? You know, something like that in our Facebook group. So then it just kind of gets people pouring in and talking. And every time we make a post about one of the sponsors that we use, more people contact them because it's, it's just how people are. You need to give them different opportunities to contact sponsors in different ways. So there are some people that love to hear our ads about Musicbed and they listen to it and they've reached out to them because of that. But there's other people that they're working out or they're doing something different and they hear it all the time, but they kind of forget about it whenever they get home. But whenever we make a post where we're talking about it, you know, typing it out, click, click, click. That was me typing for those of you. I don't know why I did that. Um, John's looking at me like, why did you do that? Anyway, um, they will see that post. And then because we, we made it and we put a link where they can click on it, then they go over there and do it. So, you know, just kind of thinking about how can I take care of them? How can I make them love me even more than they do? You know, that's another way another <clears throat> thing to think about. So, John, you're good at the extra mile stuff. What do you what do you have to add? Um, thank you, first of all. But uh, I think that one of the things that we do, we obviously we have a video portion of our podcast as well. And instead of just sitting in front of the camera, especially at the beginning and just talking, Nick and I decided we really wanted for our podcast sake, because we were a video people podcast, we wanted to really show the production value and raise the production value. So we made several 30 to 60 second commercials that had video elements to them that mm-hmm. they w- the sponsor would have paid $1,500, $2,000 just for that. And so I remember Nick made an animated video of me and him like talking heads kind of video. And then we made one where, you know, we're talking about certain artists on music bed. So, um, you know, it's showing them on the screen, it's showing their website. And we just went that extra mile. And like Nick said, we made sure to let them know. And so maybe you have a new a new sponsor and you're thinking, what can I do? You know, you could bring them on as a guest. You could, you know, make sure to have posts in your group or you could send an email out to your newsletter and just say, hey, one of the things, too, we did was we created a link on our website, howtofilmweddings.com slash music bed. And we would point to it and we would put the episode that they were on with us and we'd make it easy for people to to click that link and it's right in there to that affiliate link for them to purchase. And we just made it easy on them. And every sponsor has a dot com slash their website or their business name. So we just say, hey, you get this website hosted on our site. It gets people pouring to your site, but at the same time, it gets them pushed out. And that way that the the sponsor can really see, oh, wow, all these clicks are coming from this website. The, this is valuable to me. And going that extra mile is for that reason, not just so you can, you know, toot your own horn, but if you do take extra good care of people, the ones that you want are going to notice and they're going to notice because they see their numbers go up because you're getting them new business. Another thing that you can do is invite your sponsors to be on your podcast. We have done this a few times. Um, and in kind of set it up and we're like, 
as, as we have done this, you know, we've been like, listen, we're obviously going to push you and we want you to talk about your services and that kind of stuff. But if you can kind of angle it and set this sponsor up as an authority figure that they know what they are talking about, that they are the end all about whatever topic it is, you get them set up with that. And then as they're kind of talking and they're not specifically talking about their product, but they can share their knowledge, what they know, what they bring to the table. And then when they pitch it at the end, you know, and don't, don't charge them, you know, to come on and be on your podcast, but say, Hey, this is something that I want our listeners to have this relationship with you that I have. And I want them to use you because we believe in you. That, that just goes another way because I don't think you're going to have a sponsor out there that isn't going to want and be willing, you know, to come on your podcast for just some even more exposure. Right. Yeah, uh, totally. And so for me, what I was always looking for is like, if I am the sponsor, what is going to make me really excited? You know, and when it comes down to it, if I'm paying money, I want to see a result. And even if I don't see a result in the first month, I need to be going that extra mile. I I want that person. I want to feel like that company is working for me, even if it doesn't sell me anything in the first month. And one of the big things and ways we go the extra mile with our sponsors is we don't just sign them up and then be like, okay, good luck. We're going to do ads. Mm -hmm. We're following up with them and we're doing certain things. And that's the next thing I wanted to talk about is how we follow up with our current sponsors. And that is part of going the extra mile. But, you know, what? once a month or so, once every other month, I'm reaching out to every single sponsor personally and just saying, hey, Laura, this is John with How to Film Weddings. I'm really excited about Music Bed. I'm really excited about Wedditor. I just wanted to check in. Are you guys still getting people coming to this, you know, to your, your site? Are you still getting new people? I know from our metrics and data that new people are signing up because we have affiliate links with some of these companies. But People are talking about it in the group, stuff like that. I can take screenshots in the group and say, wow, this conversation really took off when we started talking about music bed. There's 264 comments and I can take a screenshot and put it in the email. Mm -hmm. And like all I'm doing is alluding to the fact that they have a really good thing with us and we're constantly doing work for them. But by following up with them and staying in front of them and seeing where they are, seeing how happy they are and reiterating to them, this is a long term process. That's so huge. A lot of people, if you just kind of lay it out in front of them that, hey, it might be three or four months before you get a single sale with us. But by staying in front of people for a long period of time, that's what works the best with podcasting and educating them and really following up with them in that way from the beginning saying that's why we only do a minimum of three months because we don't think in four episodes the message is going to get really clear. We want to be in front of them again and again and again. So that way, when they do look to switch their music, you know, licensing company, or they are looking to have a film edited, or they are looking for a financial advisor, they've heard it so many times that it's just Mm -hmm. an easy like, oh yeah, I want to use them. So following up with your current sponsors and just staying in touch with them is a huge way to serve them and go the extra mile. Another thing with following up with them is they might, they might not be happy with the money that they're spending with you. Like it just might not be to them. It just doesn't make sense. And so you, if you reach out, let's say they they do sign a three month contract and after month one, they're like, Hey, this isn't working for us. What, you know, we're not happy. We feel like we're wasting your money. Then you still have, okay, what can we do to figure this out? What would make you happy? What can we do? So this kind of goes in ties in with going the extra mile because you're like, okay, contractually, these are our obligations, but what is something that we can do to take a step further? What's something that we can do to make it worth your time to make it worth your while. Okay. So if you're, if you're following up with them and you're in constant contact with them, you know, and it doesn't, you don't need to be bombarding your sponsors all the time, but doing a, at least a one month in checkup, you know, every month and just saying, Hey, what's going on? Are you feeling happy? Do you have any questions? Do you need anything from me? Do you have any new marketing campaigns that are coming out that you want us to help you and promote? You know, that sort of thing is really, really going to take your customer or your sponsorship um, relationship even further. 
you have to think about it from their shoes. And I think so many times we get so in our world that we don't think about what they are going through. Now, if I'm a CEO of a company that's willing to spend money on a podcast, I'm probably just not the most available. I'm kind of mm-hmm. busy and I'm I'm taking a little bit of a risk. Like I'm ju- I just want to get an inve- a return on the investment. And so just to assume that they're happy or to assume that they're good is is a very bad plan. And so like one of our companies that is newer, you know, we're still figuring out how we can best serve them. And, you know, it's like, oh, maybe we can run a promotion this month. You know, it's like we know that they're like we're really not seeing as many sales as we want. And we know that our product is really good and we know that we have a really big audience and we know that the audience really loves what we have to say. So there's something either off in the messaging or in the offer or something. And so we can say, hey, we've had, you know, 34 people purchase your product. We know that that is actually really good for the first month. We want to build this relationship long term. And so we're able to say, what if we ran this promotion this month? Or what if we threw in a little bonus for anybody that buys this product from you this month? And and like Nick is saying, if you're not asking them about it, if you're not in in touch with them, they might be frustrated. And after three months, they just bounce instead of, you know, you've got this contract and you do things. And we've done all kinds of things where it's like, people are like, yeah, the bookings are low or it's like, well, let's just do a bonus episode. Let's have you on. Let's get. And if they see that they're willing to continue to go that extra mile with you. Anything else to add about following up with their their current sponsors, Nick, before we head off the break? I I think that we have covered it all pretty, pretty well and pretty extensively. So whenever we get back from break, we're going to talk about a real life story about pivoting with one of our sponsors and how we are able to both help each other out with that. So we'll talk about that as soon as we get back from break. If you have a pulse, you probably hate the subject of taxes and running the bookkeeping portion of your business. But like it or not, if you want to be a successful podcaster, you are going to have to pay attention to your numbers. But don't worry, we have the answer for you, Core Financial. Our friends over at Core Financial have taken the pressure off of us so we can focus on what we love doing most, running our podcast. They take care of all of our taxes, monthly bookkeeping, financial plans, and make sure we take full advantage advantage of all of the tax benefits we qualify for. It just feels good knowing we aren't going to get a big surprise during tax season. If you are serious about building a business with your podcast, head on over to howtomakeapodcast.co slash core to see what they can do for you. So you've got everything you need for your podcast. You've recorded your audio and video. You're so excited, but wait, you don't know how to master the audio or edit the video of your podcast. We know someone who can help the podcast editors. Picture this. You record both audio and video for your podcast. You upload it to your remote editor, and a few days later, your podcast is ready for you to upload and push to the world. What will you do with your extra time? Connect with sponsors? Grow your Facebook group? Start that project or even course you have dreamed of for months? The possibilities are endless. We are blown away by the podcast editors and love working with them and using their services. They can edit audio, video, or both for your podcast. Don't get stuck trying to do this on your own. Get in touch with the podcast editors today. If you'd like to save 50% off of your first project, head over to howtomakeapodcast.co slash the podcast editors. Welcome back from break, and we are going to go ahead and jump into our question of the day presented by the podcast editors. If you are doing video or audio or both of a podcast and you need someone to edit it for you, we highly recommend our friends over at the podcast editors. You can find more information out. You can get more information, whatever. How to make a podcast.co slash the podcast editors. Our question Mm. of the day is this, John, what do you do when your customers or sponsors aren't happy or they want to cancel their sponsorship with your podcast? Yes. So we, we have only had one sponsor that didn't stay with us and they were a company that um, provided a service that's amazing and we still use them. They just got a lot of work and we're just like, we, the ball's rolling. And so we're good. We're going to hold off Mm -hmm. for a minute. We know you guys, you know, like we'll, we'll hook you guys up Mm -hmm. or whatever, but, um, but for, for that, it was like, okay, we understand if you want to come back, let us know. The other time that I'm thinking about, like one of our, our sponsors, especially during COVID was like, Hey, all weddings have stopped and we don't have, 
you know, work for, you know, we can't provide our service, our product for wedding filmmakers right now. I think we're going to have to cancel. We don't know. And instead of that, I, I did one of my favorite lines from friends. We pivoted, you know, we pivot, 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 <laughs> pivot. Um, we pivoted and I sent a message to the owner of this company and I was like, Hey, here's the thing. It's coming back. Like weddings are coming back and we know the importance of staying, you know, like we've built this relationship with this person. And so I just said, Hey, what if we cut your rate down by like a third for the month? And why don't we revisit this back in a month? Like, why don't we, instead of canceling, let's just pivot. Um, and within that month, things picked back up and they booked a ton of stuff and they're, they're back at full price after a month. But if a customer isn't happy or they want to cancel, I mean, if they're not happy, that's really either, I mean, hopefully not on you as like you haven't done your job, but they might just not be getting the bookings or your your client, right. your listeners might not be in love with their product. And so, you know, just thanking them and ending it well is okay. Um, but also not just letting that happen is what I would recommend. Like if they're not happy with the amount that they're paying, it's like, well, why don't we try this for three more months? I really want to blow you away. Maybe you're spending a little bit too much here. What if we bring that down? We put you in a mid roll ad instead of at the beginning of the episode, or we'll put you in every other episode and we'll do a promotion once a month for the next three months or like something to just like keep them on and see if you mm -hmm. can get that built back up. And so giving a, like if there's an A or B option, I would say maybe try to create a C option. Like what mm -hmm. else could you think of in a pivoting way to really get them to stay on? And because if you can keep them on, that is going to help prolong your podcast. Yeah, what absolutely. It, well, yeah. In, in another real life example. So we had another sponsor and um, we it was like John and I were on one page and they were kind of on another page, you know, just with how we would promote a specific thing. And then they contacted us after this promotion was over and they were like, w we got like it was like less than five signups. Like it was just really, mm -hmm. really poor. It didn't go well. And so John and I were like, okay, listen, we had some wires crossed, you know, we weren't on the same. So we ended up actually saying, okay, you know what? We're going to give you a free month. Okay. Um, and, mm -hmm. and maybe that doesn't work with your business. Maybe it does, but John and I are very long-term thinking and we would much rather have take no income for one month from a sponsor so that we can keep them for months or years rather than, oh, give us our money now. And then they're gone after their contract is expired. And that's a, you know, couple $3,000 a month that we are getting from them. Okay. Yep. So think about it. And so we pivoted whether this was our fault or their fault, you know, that doesn't matter, but us doing what we could again, going that extra mile and giving them value for something and saying, you know, listen, we're not going to charge you. We're just going to keep pushing you guys. And then in a month, you know, over the next few weeks, let's figure this out. So then in next month we can launch this new thing and we can all do it the right way and all be on the same page. So, um, pivoting is so huge when you're working with people, especially when it's been long term. Okay. After a while they might continue to pay it, but they're like, I, I, I don't know. So what can we do to mix things up? What can you do to make it different? Another thing that I recommend when it comes to pivoting is re-recording your ads every quarter. Every few, you know, if you have the same sponsors, you know, we, we, we had our initial ads for probably almost a year. It was probably way too long because eventually it just turns into white noise. So, um, re-recording your ads is a great way to have the same sponsors and have the same message, but people will hear it just a little bit differently because your, your listeners that continue to listen like, Oh, this is different. I will, um, you know, keep up going with this. So with yep. that, whenever, let's say you have your, your list or your, your sponsor, they've been on for, you know, two months or three months or six months or kind of whatever you sign them on for. And it's in, you know, month, you know, we're at two and a half wait, two and a half months through our three month contract. So, and you want them to renew, you want them to re up, you want them to continue to be a sponsor. John, what do you have to say about contract renewals and keeping those sponsors happy so that they will continue to be a sponsor on your show? So many things to think about here. Uh, the first thing that I think of is 
Every time that I'm communicating with our sponsors, I'm not saying we're going to give this a try for three months and then you can quit after that. Like it's always a for your first three months, we're going to do this. And then in your next three months, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. um, we've kept it at three months. We, we like that. We feel like that's the right number, like a quarter um, for the length of our contracts. But around the two month mark is when I'm sending an updated message and saying, Hey, I'm updating your contract for three more months. I'm going to keep the price the same. Our numbers are up, but we just want to, you know, we just want to make it like to where we keep this the same. And when we're doing this, depending on what it is, like when it comes to next year, we'll probably bump our prices some, um, maybe just because our numbers are way up for our podcast. But if we're going to do that, we're going to let them know in plenty of time. Mm -hmm. So it's not jolting to them so they can plan ahead. But about two months into the three month contract, I update the contract. And by using something like HoneyBook, I can just update their contract and it sends them a notification for them to accept the change to the contract. And so I, I have the first three months in the description of what they get in their package. And I just add in a copy and paste new, a new three month thing. And instead of saying like January through March, it'll have another paragraph that says April through June. And it says, you get this, you get this. And it just makes it really easy for them um, to be like, oh, okay, I can make this change. And I add three more months of automatic invoices that go out at that point. So music bed this week just accepted the changes to their contract. So they just signed up for three more months, but it's, I, after a while, I just, am like, here's your next three months. I like, I'm just making it as calm and easy. Not like, Hey, are you guys wanting to renew for three more months? I'm just like, don't, here it is. Here's the three don't months. Don't give your sponsors a way to back out. Like if they want to back out, they will tell you, but don't put that thought in their mind um, because you want them to continue with you. You know, we've mentioned it a few times in this podcast in the, in the previous one, but if you're hearing us talk about contracts and you want to get into that, um, check out how to make a podcast.co slash honeybook. Um, there you can find our CRM, which is the service that we use where we accept payments, we write contracts, we do emails, we do a whole bunch of stuff. Our day-to-day, our, -day, our busy work stuff is all run through HoneyBook. So if you want to uh, check that out, that's howtomakeapodcast.co slash HoneyBook for more information. So today on this episode, you know, you have your sponsors. We've talked about going the extra mile, following up with the sponsors, you know, pivoting if necessary, your contract renewals. But the thing that you need to keep in mind above all else. And a thing that John and I share a whole lot whenever it comes to um, our wedding video businesses and our podcasts and all of that kind of stuff is content is still king. Like you can be such a good people person and you can say all the right things and you can do all the right things. But if your podcast just isn't good, it's not recorded well, it sounds bad, or the information that you're putting out there just doesn't matter to people and it's not getting traction. Like if you don't have the best content that you can produce that you're putting out there, then none of this stuff that we're talking about matters, okay? Yeah. So you need to be self-aware enough to look at your podcast and be objective and say, does this matter? Like, is this making an impact? Is this something that other people genuinely want to listen to? And I think we can get into this trap as podcast people and say, I've only had a hundred downloads this month that I guess people just don't, don't want to like, I guess I suck. But the, the problem might not be that your podcast sucks, but that you're having a trouble with distribution. OK, so you just need to kind of figure that out and, and get maybe some honest feedback from somebody. But you need to produce the best content that you can so that your listeners will be excited to listen to you and your sponsors will be excited to spend more money to stick with you. So, so good. make your content so good. good. My friend. Yeah, Thanks. your content can't suck. You know, you got to take care of these sponsors and. You have to look at them as people that you're not babying them, but you are guiding them. They, they probably don't sponsor a ton of podcasts. And so you have to keep the narrative pushing towards your growth of your podcast, mm -hmm. the growth of your community, the good vibes that are happening and show them with the numbers, but also follow through like Nick is saying with not having sucky content. If nobody's listening to your podcast, they're not going to sell 
like the the sponsors are not going to sell things. They're not going to make money. And so being creative in a way to really, you know, shine light on your podcast in a good way, continuing with them to, you know, with their contract renewals and all that stuff and following up with them. Like this is going to be the best thing for you. And Nick, I can't get off this episode without saying that the content from this episode and last episode is part of a new mini course that we are releasing soon called Monetization Mastery. Is that what we're calling it? I was confident in myself until I I started to say it. Yes, it is the Monetization Mastery. There you go. And these are just the, the, the points that we're talking about are the basics that we're, we're going through in this deep dive on this mini course. If you've purchased the podcast blueprint, this is one of the bonuses that was included. So that's coming out soon. So if you've purchased that already, it's going to be in your uh, your student login. You'll have access to it very soon. And that this is all like it'll be available in the store. We'll send you information and stuff. It's almost done. So we wanted to just make note of that. Nick, I'll let you tie up this episode, put a bow on it and let us get out of here. Yeah, absolutely. So we want to thank you listeners so much for um, listening into our podcast episode this week. John, it has been great to hang out with you as always. Um, You know, we want to push our friends over at the podcast editors today. So if you want to, um, you know, take your something off of your plate so that you can spend more time doing the thing that you love, which is podcasting, or maybe going after those sponsors or getting more money for your podcast, we highly recommend the podcast editors. So head on over to podcast. Nope. Nope howtomakeapodcast.co slash the podcast editors. You can find more information out there to get hooked up with them so that they can take the editing off of your plate. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, we will see you. See you guys.